Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at this 6 meter amplifier that I recently picked up at a ham fest. Now I haven't hooked it up and tried it yet so I don't even know if it works but before we do that let's take a closer look at what this thing is. So here's a look at the amplifier. First off we'll look at this side and you can see there's a couple of labels on here. This one is probably from the factory because it says factory adjust to 42.260 megahertz. So this was probably originally used for public safety in the VHF low band area, maybe by a fire department or a police department or something along those lines. But over here next to that you can see there's another label that was added probably by its previous owner that says 6 watts in, 35 watts out, 50 megahertz. So I'm not sure if someone got in here and tuned it up to work better on 6 meters or if this is just what they ended up measuring when they used it in the amateur band. So on this side you can see we've got an older style plug for 13.8 volts to power it and then over here is the RF out SO239 connector. On this side you can see there is another label that was put on here by its previous owner. 6 meter amp, 1 to 6 watts in, 20 to 40 watts out. But then below it is the factory nameplate that gives us all the specs. You can see that this is a model PA1-1AC. You can see that it was manufactured by TPL Communications from Gardenia, California. And then over on this side you can see there's another SO239 and this is for the input from the radio. On the bottom you can see there is a QC sticker which is only partially there. It was kind of folded in to the lid there so somebody has probably been in there at some point in the past. And then the only other feature on the bottom that's noteworthy is the fact that the bottom kind of extends out past the unit and has some mounting holes in there so you could screw this thing down if you wanted to. So before I get on with testing the amp I want to tell you the story of how I ended up buying this thing. I was walking around at a ham fest here in Connecticut a couple of weeks ago and I saw this thing on a table and I got excited because the price was real low especially for a six meter only amp. So I made the guy an offer and he took it. So I, I came home with it and then when I started looking at it I realized well gee this is an FM amp and I don't really run FM. Now I do run six meter sideband and the radio that I use you saw earlier in the video is my Elecraft K3. Now that K3 is only a 10 watt radio so I thought boy it would be nice to have a little QRP amp to boost that thing up a little bit. But like I said this is an FM amp it's not going to really work on sideband and it didn't occur to me at the time to check it for that because the price was so low I just got kind of starstruck and ended up with it but that's the way things go. So I figured what I'd do is test it out here with you guys we'll see if it works on FM and if it does I'll probably end up selling it maybe either here locally if no one here wants it then I'll put it up on QTH or something like that for sale. So anyway having said all that let's uh, throw this thing on my radio and see what it does. So here's a look at the setup. This of course is my Elecraft K3 and like I mentioned earlier in the video this is the QRP model. It doesn't have the 100 watt power amplifier. The most it's capable of on 6 meters is 8 watts but I've got it turned down to 5 watts as you can see here. Up here I've got my MFJ 872 SWR watt meter that we'll use to monitor the power output from the radio and the amplifier and then of course over here is the amplifier. I'm running the radio from a linear power supply that you can't see under the desk here and the amplifier I'm actually running it on a separate power supply that's over there out of the shot. That one's also a linear power supply. It was just easier to hook up to that one than the one that's under the bench. So the radio is set to FM mode. I want to hit transmit. Now you can see here that even though the radio is set to 5 watts it looks like it's actually putting out closer to 6 at least according to this meter. So I'll flip the meter back up to the 200 watt scale. I'll go turn the power supply on for the amplifier and then we'll transmit and see what we get on the meter. Okay you probably heard the amplifier click on and you can see that the meter is reading somewhere around 27 or 28 watts. So right about what we would expect. So let's look at checking the difference in signal strength another way. So I've got my SDR Play RSP1A connected up to, of all things, a 2 meter antenna. Now the reason I've done that is we want kind of an inefficient antenna to keep the signal strength kind of low so that we can measure it. And of course I'm still just connected to the dummy load on the Alicraft. 
So what we should be able to do is key the radio up at 5 watts, measure the signal strength using SDR Uno, kick the amp on, and then check the signal strength again to see what the difference is. So if what we saw on the meter is accurate, the power is increasing by about four to five times when we kick the amp on. Now because SDR Uno shows the signal strength in decibels, the signal strength with the amp on should be, I don't know, six to eight decibels higher than what it is with the amp off. So let's go ahead and test it and see what we get. So I've got SDR Uno up and running. I've got it tuned to the same frequency that the Elecraft is set to transmit on. And in particular, we're gonna look mostly at the spectrum window here. And in particular, I'm gonna take a look at the signal strength reading, which is up here under this green bar. You can see right now that the noise floor is hovering somewhere around negative 113 or maybe a negative 114 decibels. So I'll go ahead and fire up the Elecraft at five watts and we'll see what the signal strength is. So you can see that after everything settles out, we're getting a signal of about minus 63 dB or so. So now let's kick on the amplifier and see what we get. So with the amp on and everything settled out, you can see that the signal is about negative 55 dB or so. And that of course is a difference of about eight dB, which is about what I expected to see based on the results from the meter. So let's put this thing on the air and see what happens. So I've got the amplifier set up and I'm connected over here to my iCom. Originally I wanted to try my Elecraft, but I want to test it with somebody over the air. And the problem is, is I don't have the FM filter for this radio. So I really can't hear <laughs> the FM on this. It doesn't sound good at all. In fact, I can barely hear what the, the guy on the other end is is saying so i'm not going to be able to use this one and probably even when i transmit on it it's going to sound the same way so i've gone over to the icom i've turned the power all the way down i think i'm at about four watts right now so i'm going to transmit to my friend on the other side of town and we'll have him check his s meter see what i'm giving him and then i'll click the amplifier on and then we'll see what it sounds like after that. So one other thing I'll mention is that I'm on 50.135, which is normally a sideband frequency, but the antenna I'm running, which is the five element M squared, really won't work well <laughs> up in that portion of the band. It's got a real narrow bandwidth on it. Now we are allowed to run FM on this part of the band, but you know, gentleman's agreement, normally you wouldn't do it, but nobody's using the band. The band's not open. There's no contest, nothing like that going on. So I think for this quick test, we're going to be okay, but I wouldn't make a habit of it. KB10YB and one NUG. KB10YB. So I just checked my meter. I'm putting out four watts. So we're going to say S7 for four watts. When I click on the amplifier, that should put it up to around 20 or 25 watts. So you really, you should only see it go up to maybe S8 if we're lucky. I'll go click on the amplifier now and the next transmission will be with it. Okay, so how does that sound there? The amplifier's on. I heard it click. It looks like roughly about 25 watts. Well, might surprise you, but from a solid needle right on the S7, it's now a needle above the S9. Okay, well, I'll take it. You know, that's, uh, that's not exactly what I expected. I don't know. I guess it's working, though. How's the audio? Does it sound distorted or anything like that, or does it sound pretty much the same? No, absolutely the same. No distortion whatsoever, and I'm a, not an expert, but you know how fussy I am about audio, so that's pretty hefty. That's not bad for a small uh, little amplifier. So next up, just for fun, we're going to switch over to sideband, and I'm going to test the amplifier there and see what he thinks it sounds like. Now, normally when you try and use an FM amplifier, a Class C amplifier on sideband, it, it's probably going to sound a bit distorted. Maybe not because we're so close, but I don't know. Let's see what happens. You never know. KB10YB, N1, NUG. Okay, S3 with upward modulation to S4 without the amplifier. Okay, sounds good. Next transmission, I'll click on the amplifier and uh, we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, KB10YB, N1, NUG. Amplifier's on. You can probably even hear it clicking in the background as I talk, but uh, what do you think? How does it sound? 
no clicking at all. I wouldn't know you had an amplifier. Right now you're S S7. No clicking, no nothing. Oh, okay. I thought you'd hear it coming through the microphone. The audio sounds fine. You're not hearing any distortion or anything like that? No, no, no. No problem with the audio. And we're so close. I would hear it if there was. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'd say working just fine. Okay, wow. Well, that sounds good. It's uh, it's definitely putting a strain on that relay in there because it's it's clicking on and off pretty quick as I talk here. So I'm going to run over and shut it off. Roger that. We'll be standing by KB1 or YB. So that's pretty much going to wrap things up for the old 6 meter amplifier here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.